Boys and girls, this is the Undisputed Era. Adam Cole, Kylo Riley. Hello, Steve. Hello, Larson. It's me, Dexter Loomis, NXT superstar. So here's my shout out to the Going In Raw podcast. Clever name. Hey, Brendo, Steve here. Hey, Larson. And welcome back to Going In Raw, the only pro wrestling podcast you can be listening to right here at youtube.com forward slash Steve and Larson. We have wherever podcasts can be found, of course, taped live at the Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Steve and Larson. Uh, NXT Vengeance Day is in the books. It's Valentine's Day. Not a lot of love on this pay per view, though, because we had no. the breakups. Up. Breakups. Breakups, yes. Of the Undisputed Era, Larson. <laughs> Shot. Yeah, that capped off, which is a pretty fun takeover. You know, takeovers, they generally deliver. Oh, yeah, for um, sure. At a really high level, that's what they do. They set the bar really high. They usually meet that bar. Sometimes even exceed it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Excuse me. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Finn, after successfully defending the NXT title, uh, he's beat down by Peter Dune, mm-hmm. Lorcan, and Birch. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the Undisputed Era, Undisputed Era, sorry, run down to make the save. Uh, it seems like Kyle O'Reilly's trying to recruit Finn into the faction. Mm-hmm. They all stand and pose together, and then Adam Cole super kicks Finn. Mm. And then uh, Kyle O'Reilly's like, WTF, Adam Cole. And he's arguing, and then he super kicks Kyle O'Reilly. So this obviously has been a bit of a long time coming. Uh, mm-hmm. Undisputed Era have been, we've noted this, uh, spinning their wheels a bit. They've been setting up Kyle O'Reilly to be top face of the group. Adam Cole has sort of taken a step back. Um, and, uh, and this is, you know, I remember years ago we were always saying, yeah, I don't want them to break up the undisputed era. It's either they all go to SmackDown or raw, I guess, or they're going to stick around NXT, which it seems like it's going to be the case for now. Anyways, uh, they break them up so they can do something new so they can establish their own identities. They did something that I didn't think they would even try to do in NXT. Which is kind of like Undisputed Era, kind of boring. Yeah, um, yeah. And then by doing that, uh, now that they seemingly have broken up, I'm like, okay, that's fine. Yeah, dude, if they're not going to, you know, there was all sorts of excitement. I mean, I, I thought that their their test, if you will, during the Survivor Series, what, a year ago? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, a year and a half ago, I guess, um, was was great. Like, the crowd ate up. Undisputed Era, or Adam Cole anyways, there on uh, on main roster when they invaded and he had that match against Daniel Bryan and it was under weird circumstances. Um, and it's like, dude, come on, man. Like, just just, just keep going with this. Mm-hmm. And they didn't. And, uh, you know, who knows if it's a matter of, I mean, you see guys like Keith Lee, Damian Priest get called up to main roster Pretty quickly after they, you know, hit main roster in a major way. I'm sorry, uh, NXT in a major way. I mean, Keith Lee was basically off TV for like his first year at NXT. And yeah, then virtually. once once he hit TV, it was, man, he was off and running. Um, So uh, who knows if maybe the, the, the higher ups uh, at main roster bringing people up. They either think Undisputed Era is a, is a cornerstone of NXT now that they're on, you know, cable TV. Um, and they need to stay there and they need to adapt their philosophy of instead of getting people ready for Maine, they, I don't, I, I mean, it's, it's interesting to know if it, if it is, if Damian Priest, for example, and Keith Lee, for that matter, if it's a matter of, oh, once Vince catches wind of somebody, they yank him. Or if it's, Hey, there's certain people we know are going to be perfect for Maine. Mm-hmm. Let's get them ready for Maine. Let's not give Damian Priest like a lengthy North American title run mm-hmm. or, or prep mm-hmm. him for uh, NXT title run. Uh, Keith Lee won both those titles, held them both at the same time and lost pretty quickly to, to Killer Cross. Um, so it seems like it's just a matter of, oh, well, when Vince catches wind of somebody, plucks him. Yeah. Yeah. Seemingly, he's had plenty of time to see the Undisputed Era. They're not going anywhere. So you have to do something with them like they have done. Exactly. They've done it successfully and unsuccessfully. Champa is boring as hell these days. Johnny Gargano John. is wildly entertaining. He's doing some of the best work of his entire career right now. Absolutely. I think he's doing his best work, certainly, of, of yeah, he's running NXT. I didn't know anything he didn't before that. So, um, yeah, he's doing amazing work. 
So Undisputed Era, totally time for this to happen. Yeah. I'm glad yeah. they pulled the trigger on it. Finally, we're going to get Adam Cole with a purpose. Uh, Roderick Strong seemingly torn between uh, with this situation. Kyle O'Reilly. Uh, we're we're going to get a Adam Cole, Kyle O'Reilly match in NXT. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's, you know, that's going to be an instant match of the year candidate if that yep. happens at the next takeover, which it probably will. And it's the kind of thing that uh, it'll probably probably be mm -hmm. a pretty juicy story, given that you don't need the title for this. And that's always the best kind of stuff. It's like, well, when something has its own legs and it doesn't need the title, mm -hmm. you get some pretty cool stuff. Yep, exactly, exactly. Speaking of cool stuff, there's a lot of cool stuff on this show. Uh, MSK walking away with that dusty classic. Oh, Larson yeah. walking away with Big Red and the trio's title. Yeah, coming home, baby, at least for a week. Because yeah, elimination chamber. There's a lot weekend. of pay per views coming up, so you're gonna have quite the gauntlet here. Coming I know. up, if I run through it, that's gonna be a hell of a feat. Hell of a feat. It'll be it'll be a pretty decent story. It'll be okay, an okay story for sure. It'll be a pretty great story. A pretty great story because there's the, now there's more challengers. We got the enforcer yep. get on the trios title business. Yeah. There's more titles on the line to try to defend. Yeah, there's a lot going on. If I can make it to the end of April, and and somehow by some miracle, mm -hmm. I think it'd be up to my intellect or acumen because no. that's been well established. That's not exist. existed. Doesn't happen. But if by some miracle, because that's what it's going to take, I yeah. can walk out of the month of April with all those titles. It's a pretty damn good run. It's okay. It's pretty decent. It's uh, a pretty damn good run. It's okay. LA Knight, newest signee there oh. in NXT. I don't know why you're so down on the same. So Eli Drake, uh, yeah, I like Eli Drake. from Impact to NWA, yeah. now to NXT. Uh, renamed. I think this is a far superior name to Eli Drake, L.A. Knight. It reminds me of uh, music producer L.A. Reed, of uh, uh, L.A. Gear Shoes, and British Knight's Shoes. He's named after two wonderful shoes from the late 80s. How well, could you not like this we name? we don't know he's actually named oh, after two shoes on, from the 80s. Oh, come on, man. First of all. Dude, he totally is. And part of, and yes, while I, if that is the case, I respect the references. Uh, you're naming yourself after two basically dead brands from the 90s. But uh, much loved. Much beloved. Uh, that's up for debate. Did that's you have debate. either British Knights or L.A. gear? I've, 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 been, a, I've been by and large a, a Nike guy for the better part of my, my, my years on this planet. Uh, actually, it was Reebok. Some Reebok Club C's that got me into to name brand athletic shoes. But from there, primarily Nikes. I want to know what the friendos think. Let us know in the comments. L.A. Knight, yay or nay? We're going to settle this once and for all. Uh, so yeah, he showed up in the pre-show, uh, in the kickoff show, he sort of interrupted a segment with, uh, Wade Barrett and then a fella from ball barstool sports who I think yeah, does a wrestling podcast there. Wasn't, wasn't familiar with him. I don't know who that guy is. <laughs> Neither do That's I. not, I'm not throwing shade. I just don't know who he is. <laughs> Same. I don't know who he is either. He's a guy from barstool sports. Maybe somebody yeah. here in chat. Okay. Oh, wow. Like chat, chat's blowing it up. Yeah. You're not, I mean, could somebody, one of the mods, can you run like a poll or something so we can get a formal, I can't count all this. I see a lot of yays, but then there's also quite a few nays here. Oh, there you uh, go. Pulls up. So, uh, okay. Awesome. Very good. Well done, everybody. Uh, okay. So, uh, oh, I guess we'll just, the early lead. we'll just start uh, from the beginning here. We had a uh, kicking things off. The uh, Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Women's Cup Finals. Uh, Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez took on uh, uh, Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon. And mm -hmm. uh, you and I both got this one predictions wise wrong. Uh, well, if you'd stuck to your guns, you would have got it right. I thought there was too much evidence to support Shotzi and Ember winning this. Uh, I thought that the one lone piece of evidence, which ended up, yeah, you're right, being the the right one, which was Raquel Gonzalez is not going to take any losses anytime soon. Um, I'm not sure. Again and again, I don't know how that's going to square with them getting a tag title shot. Against, I mean, I'm a, the tag title shot. I guess could be any time in the next year or so, or whenever they well, get I mean, around here's the thing to it. Too is is yes, they have a tag title shot at some point, but the number one contenders for the tag titles are Lana and Naomi right now. They get their title shot first, do they not? Aren't they aren't they number one contenders for the tag titles, or is it just kind of implied since they beat them individually in singles matches? No, I. They do. They won the number they one won contender thing. thing. They won a number yeah, they one won a contender match. thing. That's what okay. I thought, yeah. Yeah, I just, I mean, I don't know if Lana's going to win that. Lana and Naomi, I don't know if they're going to win it that. It didn't seem like it because uh, Naomi and Lana beat 
uh, Nia and Shayna in, in singles matches. So mm-hmm. it didn't really seem like wow, that's, that's this like is their win. A really close pull right here. Fifty two percent to forty eight percent on the Yays. So you know. Might I'm be a do majority, our, but not official, by much. The official official vote of going uh, going in raw, vote nay for this. What? Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Is that wrong? Yeah, fine. You just you do whatever you want. You won the title, so I guess you're the official uh, 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 decision maker of going in raw. Yes. Yeah, the spokesperson. Right. There you go. Anyways, if that's, if that's the case, I'm taking tomorrow night off. <laughs> In turn. Um, so anyways, this is a really fun match. There were, there were some spots that, uh, I mean, it's it sort of played out the way most of their matches play out, which is which might end up being the thing that breaks them up. I thought that was going to be uh, the this match where Dakota Kai gets her ass kicked while Every Raquel Gonzalez. Yeah, Every exactly. Time. And Every she has time. to tag in Raquel Gonzalez for them to get any uh, offense. Raquel Gonzalez's plus minus is really high. Dakota yes. Kai's is really low. Very low. <laughs> exactly. So, but in this case, it was just enough. Raquel Gonzalez's plus minus to get the win for them. Um, yeah. But uh, well, yeah, there are some really good is, spots in this match. I'll, yeah, go I'll, ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll put this out there. Maybe instead of the breakup happening now, it's mm-hmm. okay. Here, we get this opportunity on the largest stage that we're going to get as a tag team. Yeah. Yeah. And, and Dakota Kai eats the pin there, like on Raw or something, you know? That that would seem to be the case. Yeah, that would seem to be the case. And then Raquel be like, hey, you spoiled my opportunity to get it to the main roster. Now I'm going to take it out on you and completely annihilate you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then and then eventually she takes that t- title off EO. Because that seems to be the story. Because she's basically unstoppable right now. Let, let me ask you. So it's it's funny because, like, so we'll, we'll go down, like, the major beats. Because, like I said, there's a bunch of fun spots in this match. There was. Uh, after the match, when they won. I love I number one. I think NXT is big on, you know, we we saw this especially back with Sasha and Bailey in their great series. You know, their their rivalry was so great that like at the end, you know, when Triple H would give the flowers to Sasha, mm-hmm. and then I think she, he gave it to Bailey like later on when she ended up winning the title. Um, they're okay with a little bit of you know of 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 people's characters shining through, coming through. Yeah, yeah. When it comes for accomplishments like this, they're all about the pageantry. Mm-hmm. Uh, letting people kind of drop character for a bit, yeah, to to channel their genuine emotions, and I think that's great. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, afterwards, so when they were celebrating, Raquel Gonzalez was all smiles. She has a really lovely smile. She was it was ear to ear. What a great moment for her. Who's put on a lot of work, but I kind of wonder if maybe because she is this dominant monster person, you know, always has a cold face. You know, a stone face. She gets up there and she's marking out big time for the trophy. It's a great moment for her. Yeah. But I wonder if it would have played into the, that story, which we think is probably going to be the way it plays out. Had she remained a bit stone face, looks at the title and is like, or the trophy rather, and is like, "Yeah, this is good. like this is just one step to a larger goal." But also, I can't help but notice at this point that I did all the heavy lifting in this match and, and th- throughout I'll- this tournament. I'll offer this. Maybe, yes, she was beaming. She was smiling ear to ear. Maybe it was like, damn, I'm good. I'm carrying this team. <laughs> yeah, I've done so much to get us to this point to winning this, this trophy. I'm actually going to enjoy it for a bit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can ascribe any, any type Maybe of she'll pick it up and try to toss it, across, you know, uh, to another boat. <laughs> From boat to boat. Yeah. Yeah. We got to go out. We got to go out on that, uh, that empty lake that you were roaming around today. Were you just by yourself at the empty lake? No, I didn't go out there by my load. Someone with the family. We I just really went, wish walked in, around. in kayfabe, you just got to say, hey, you went to the empty light by yourself. It was me walking around like George Michael Blue <laughs> with my head down yeah. for an hour. <laughs> You're looking for the Try not to town. trip on a rock. That's great. That's um, what you want to hear? Yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I want to hear. Uh, anyways, so yeah, like, like we mentioned, the story of this match, Kai Dakota Kai isolated for much of the start of the match, yeah. as usual. Yeah. Raquel yeah. finally gets a tag in, starts dominating. Kai tags in, gets an assisted senton, then gets hit by Shotzi with a senton to break up the pin attempt. Raquel power bombs Shotzi into the barricade after that because Raquel keeps on having to clean up the mess that Dakota Kai's making. Yeah. Um, you know, there is a spot where, uh, uh, let's see here, Raquel gets double teamed. Uh, uh, you know, they keep on trying to get the pin on her, but they, every time they get two, I really think they should have gone, you know, she kicks out at one and all that stuff. Mm-hmm, Dakota Kai mm-hmm. gets tagged in, Shotzi takes it to her. Uh, but then eventually Kai is able to finally tag back in Raquel, uh, take Shotzi up to the top, and Shotzi hits a really ugly looking slice bread. <laughs> it just gets you sort of nervous. Uh, then does a, a great looking suicide dive to take out Kai. 
then they're able to team up on Raquel. So Raquel's just taken all this all this mm-hmm. offense from these two. Well, there's at one point, I don't remember where it is in the exact chrono- uh, chronologically, uh, where I believe Raquel gets like drop kicked into the ring steps, and she just kind of gets right back up. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, not like she's yeah. not selling. She gets drop kicked into the ring steps or, or tossed, and then tries to get back in the ring like pretty much immediately. They've really told her, "Hey, look, you, you're not gonna take. You're not. You're gonna sort of shake off a lot of this fairly easily." She's a she's a new Terminator of NXT. She is, yeah, yeah. So uh, they do an electric chair crossbody on Dakota Kai to the outside, was which was really great. Uh, Raquel attacks at, right after that. Attacks uh, both Ember and Shotzi on the outside. Uh, back in, Ember sort of takes control over Raquel. She puts her in a submission. Uh, that's broken up by Dakota Kai. Now she's in. Uh, we get a code breaker backbreaker combo thing for uh, Kai on Shotzi for two. Uh, Raquel then goes and goes outside, throws Ember off the stage. So they did like the 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 normal. They did a ramp that goes straight to the actual apron to the top of the yeah apron, yeah like the like a, uh, like AEW does at Dynamite mm-hmm. Daily's place. So like uh, Raquel Gonzalez throws Ember off the stage into the barricade. She lands on the floor, much like Cal Jack. Uh, threw his opponent into a wall, and he landed on the floor at Bloodsport 4 this past weekend. Mm-hmm. Check him mm-hmm. out. Back in action, Bloodsport 5 next Saturday. Yes, do. Yes, do. Uh, and then the finish saw uh, Raquel throwing Kai onto Shotzi and then get Shotzi up for her finish. Uh, and then they and Raquel pins Shotzi. Kai gets on top of Raquel to keep her down. I, I, like, I, I like the, 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 the storytelling there of... of- Raquel getting the finish, getting the pin, the, and Dakota unnecessary like hopping on her back. You know, yeah, yeah. Raquel is carrying this team. Yeah, totally. Uh, for three nice. there, uh, fun match, lots of great spots, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and yeah. So your 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 first ever women's dusty dusty cup dusty classic cup winners, mm-hmm. uh, Raquel Gonzalez and Dakota Kai. Next, we had Kushida versus John Gargano. Oh boy, what a match! This was a great match. So uh, as the the way are making their way to the ring, uh, they go through like a little kind of like a doorway. So they're kind of, you know, kind of flanking each other. And so at first when they walk through, it looked like Austin Theory kind of playing up the, you know, the 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 Dirk Diggler aspect of his character just like walked into something. Mm-hmm. But then, no, he, seemingly he was like yanked mm-hmm. back away. Yeah. But we don't know if that were the case, if that was the case, who did it? Yeah. We could surmise it might have been Dexter Loomis, but without further evidence, we can't say with certainty. So they all walk out to the, the stage. John's looking for the no look high five, realizes Theory's not there. He sends Candace and Indy back to find uh, Austin. Again, no clue as to what happened. I'm sure we'll find out on Wednesday. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you like really technical wrestling, you're going to love, especially the beginning of this match, just really fast, fluid, back and forth, mat based technical greatness uh, going on, which you'd expect from. Wrestlers of the caliber of Kushida, mm-hmm. and John, mm-hmm. Gargano. Uh, eventually, th- though, things do get a bit more chippy, more physical. Uh, get some more strikes in there. Um, uh, Kushida, as he often does, working over uh, Gargano's arm, setting him up for a hoverboard lock. Uh, I believe Johnny was working over Kushida's head and neck area uh, down down the uh, down the stretch here. Uh, so uh, Kushida's going for another handspring heel kick. He did one earlier. Johnny catches that, locks on Gargano escape. Kushida escapes that, sinks on a hoverboard lock. We get a series of roll, roll-ups, uh, and then John hits the super kick. Uh, and then he lawn darts Kushida. Kushida responds with a suplex into the corner. Uh, Kushida does the bit where they're on the top rope. He does with his opponent flip off, almost like a Spanish fly right into an arm bar. Uh, Johnny can't block it. He does get to the, uh, He does eventually get to the bottom rope. Uh, Gargano uh, then while Kushida still has hoverboard lock applied on the floor ramps Kushida in the apron and did the barricade um, and then they're up onto the ramp Kushida kind of disappears for a bit he comes sprinting down the, <laughs> the ramp hits a running kick on Gargano's arm <sighs> yeah. back in the ring hoverboard lock Gargano gets to the ropes and, and in the process of doing so like snaps Kushida's face against the top rope mm-hmm. and that allows John to hit one final beat on the stage, back in the ring, another one final beat to get the W. Yeah, really good match. I, I really was kind of surprised. Like towards the finish here, they did a great job of of making me think that Kushida really had a chance to, to get this chance. thing. The uh, the running down the the ramp, kicking the arm, uh, you know, uh, 
he, having that hoverboard lock on for as long as he did. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, Austin Theory being taken out. Um, you know, you figure, oh, man, that's it for Johnny then because, you know, if, without Austin Theory, can he can he pull this off? You, but you, he you assume if, if, if it's an even matchup, then mm-hmm. advantage Kushida. I mean, just how. given the way they built the story for sure. Um, yeah, no. I, I mean, mean, Kushida stood tall basically at every possible instance leading up to this match. The, ex- exactly. So you figure the only way Gargano would be able to get the win would be through cheating. Uh, I'm glad they didn't do that. Uh, this was a terrific match. It didn't deserve a wonky, cheaty finish, finish like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, you know, I do want Kushida to get that big win at some point, though. It really feels like he has yet to get a signature win in NXT. Yeah, that it, it really does feel that After way. After having the illustrious career he did in Japan, having such a a, a noteworthy and, and much celebrated signing to NXT. Mm-hmm. I mean, dude, for a while, of, I mean, he, I just, you know, he was injured. For, he's been injured for a spell during his time there, but just I don't know. It just seems like they they have this guy who's an amazing talent and have yet to really find a place for him on a consistent basis. I wonder if, given that in the time that he's been in NXT. They've transitioned the cruiserweight title over to NXT. They have a terrific cruiserweight champion with es- Santos Escobar. That I mean, given that he was the ace of the junior division in mm-hmm. uh, New Japan, mm-hmm. that might be the place where he can really even elevate that title even more so than Santos has done because Santos has done a hell of a job cleaning he out has the done division. A really good job. And I know, like the gag was when they brought in Kushida, oh, he's going to land on two hundred five, which yes would probably mean he would spend some time there. But you know it would be defended on takeovers, you know. I mean, because you're not gonna I mean, you're not gonna have Santos versus Kushida on regular NXT TV. Mm-mm. That might be a great spot for the cruiserweight title to real for Kushida to really take it to that next level. Could be, could be. You know, and we'll 205 see. can be sort of more of a uh, de- not developmental, but the place where the contenders come from, much like they did with Kurt Stallion. Yeah. All right. Uh, after that, the men's Dusty Cup Finals, MSK versus Grizzled Young Veterans. Steve, you missed that Gibson's promo. I know that breaks your heart. I'm going to go uh, back and watch it, man. I got to watch that. I got to watch Bloodsport, and I got to watch WandaVision tonight. There you go. You got a busy night ahead of you. Mm-hmm. So uh, Zach says, uh, MSK, you've had an emotional journey, but here's some advice. Wipe the smile off the face because uh, we're not going to have fun in this ring. And he tells them to take their green pajamas and stick them up their arse. <laughs> oh, I love him. You know what, man? I told you I, I – I, I told you this during predictions. If I had to go down with big losing big red, I'm okay with it being voting for grizzled young veterans. And I'll be honest with you, man. I, I think MSK is great. I don't like this. I don't I and it's not just because of Big Red. I do not like this. Grizzled Young Veterans, for everything they say, they're heels with good points. They've been tagging together for a long time. They've been putting in great work across NXT UK mm-hmm. and upon mm-hmm. their arrival in NXT. I don't like New guys coming in, it's like, oh, we're just gonna give them this thing. I like people who put in the work to get the to get the rewards. Man. I understand that, um, but as much as I like grizzled young veterans, they're great. Uh, MSK is a shot in the arm. The energy they have, they provide. Uh, no one else in the tag division right now in NXT has that energy. Oh, Not just in the ring, like their promos. They they had a, a promo on the pre-show. It was just all energy. Just energy. Yeah, I don't. I'm not. I'm not feeling it. Much. It's a shot in the arm. I'll, I'll turn it's a around. Shot in the arm. They're, they're a lot of fun. They're a lot of fun. But man, I'm all about that UK tag division stuff, man. I know you are. I know you, you know? are. I know you I just, are. I just. I think they put on one of my favorite matches of what, like two years ago? Was that a? Yeah, yeah, that triple threat one. Yeah. I mean, it's just to me that's the stuff right there. That's that's the really good stuff. And it's like bring Mustache Mountain over. You know? Oh, agree. You want That'd a real great. shot in the arm? That's what it is. I this just think MSK about, needs more. To, they, they need more time to like be established for me to care about them getting this. Here, here's what I appreciate appreciate about MSK is I felt like every match they've had in NXT has been better than the last. Like their debut, I was like, all right, because I, I wasn't that familiar with their work as the Rascals. I'd maybe seen a little bit, but I wasn't massively familiar with what they did. And I saw that first match, I was like, all right, they're fine. Then their their first Dusty Cup match, I was like, oh, okay, I kind of get it now. And then the semifinal match, I was like, wow, this is really good. And the match tonight against Grizzled Young Veterans, Grizzled Young Veterans are a great team, was spectacular. This was a really fun match. No, it was an awesome match. It was, it was, yeah. That being said, like I care, like the it's the characters, you know. And it's like, dude, Grizzled Young Veterans, they've been there, they've been there. I just think that you know they got they got to the finals. I think last year. Yeah, they did. But you know what's probably gonna happen is MSK will probably win those tag titles from Lorca to Birch, and then probably their first feud afterward will probably be against Grizzled Young Veterans. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
that would be what, what I would imagine. We shall see. We shall see. So this, as I mentioned, fun match uh, early on MSK with the early advantage on Gibson. Uh, eventually, though, uh, uh, where am I here? So uh, Gibson turns the tables. Uh, Gibson is doing veterans in control. Uh, that is until Nash Carter hits uh, James Drake with the suplex. Uh, Gibson goes around and tries to pull uh, Wes Lee off the apron so Carter can't get the hot tag. Lee fights him off. Ref is like too involved with that. Meanwhile, James Drake hits Nash Carr with the flatliner, gets a two count there. Eventually, though, uh, Wesley, uh, he gets in, uh, gets the hot tag, goes on a run, said Gibson out of the ring with a drop kick, falls with this massive tope over the ring post. That was amazing. Uh, then hits like a crazy kind of like flip kick on Gibson, too, where he kind of s- uh, slingshots himself in the ring, does it like a flip, and then hits the flip kick afterwards. It was great. So then he goes up top. Uh, James Drake grabs his foot. Lee boots him off. However, Gibson knocks him off, goes for a power bomb. Uh, Lee reverses that into an X factor, gets the tag to Carter. He hits a super kick, drop kicks Drake off the apron, goes after Gibson, hits the springboard cutter. That was great. Gets a two. Uh, Lee goes for that flip kick again after he gets the tag in. This time, though, Gibson saw it coming, boots him in the gut, uh, hits a suplex. Drake falls with a 450, gets a two. Uh, Grizzled Young veterans go for some sort of doomsday type move. Lee reverses that into a roll up. Drake breaks that up. Grizzled Young veterans, they're right back on the offensive uh, until Lee pushes Drake into Gibson. Uh, Carter hits an assisted uh, shooting star press on Zach. Uh, they hit a pair of top rope moves on Drake. Only gets him a two, though. MSK set for their finish. Gibson low bridges Lee out. Grizzled Young veterans hit the doomsday clothesline to the floor, which is great. Yeah. You see. Uh, James Drake doing essentially a suicide dive clothesline. Mm-hmm. Um, great stuff. Uh, Gibson, uh, where am I? Gibson, so it's Grizzled Young Veterans. Uh, they circle Nash Carter now that Wesley has been taken out. Uh, he fights them off for a bit. Eventually, Grizzled Young Veterans hit a powerbomb lung blower uh, combo. And then uh, they set up for a ticket to mayhem. Wesley comes back in to break it up. Uh, MSK hits a couple of super kicks and their finish to get the W. Uh yeah. After that, we had a terrific, amazing, Man, great. great, absolutely stellar music video of Cameron Grimes, uh, and and his money. So good. <laughs> this so good. was the stupidest, stacking most up money, amazing to the moon. thing to the moon, and it's like the most ill-fitting. Like it's like a rap song, and then all of a sudden you hear him do. And it's just off it the beat. Doesn't it's totally off the beat. It's, but it's off so the good. beat. It it's doesn't so fit. So it good, was a ma- camera. Gr- I am so, dude. You and I both, from the moment we set our eyes on Trevor Lee, knew that this guy when he would show up when Impact's reputation was not all that solid, and he would show up in PWG and Amazing. insist that they refer to him. As Impact Superstar Trevor Lee, Mm -hmm. you knew this dude got it and he was going to go to the moon. And this this stonks thing is absolute gold. And I'm glad they did this video and they showed it. It was great. Absolutely. So good. I can't even. So good. We, we just described it a little bit. You got to watch it. You just got to watch it. He, he does the, the Shawn Michaels and Playgirl pose with a bunch of money around him. He's wearing yeah. like, you know, Speedos essentially for half yeah. this thing. It's so good. He's rolling around in Lamborghini. It's amazing. Absolutely. It's not, hopefully, uh, WB has uploaded it to their YouTube channel by now because if they have, check it out. Watch it five times. It's absolutely. Great. Yeah. It's absolutely great. After that, we had women's uh, uh, NXT title action EO Shirai versus Mercedes Martinez. Uh, versus Tony Storm triple threat match. Uh, this was a lot of fun. It seemed a bit on the short side, and the, the well, finish here, really this. came out of nowhere. I'll, I'll read this. Uh, White Brownie says here, this is from Sean Ross Sapp. Hmm. I assume this is from uh, the, the post-takeover conference call. Uh, quote, Triple H says the NXT Women's Championship had a 20-minute window, so they could have went longer if they wanted, but the match went as long as the participants and agents wanted. That's interesting. That's interesting. I mean, the finish was cool. It was out of nowhere. Um, Io Shirai had basically taken herself out with uh, a crossbody off the truss. They did. They, oh, okay. So anyways, uh, it started off Mercedes Martinez and Tony Storm uh, really go at it when uh, Io Shirai misses a moonsault to the outside. That's sort of when things like really kicked off. Yeah. Uh, 
EO gets Tony. EO gets back in, gets Tony in a crossface. They do a, a nice little submission bit where EO gets Tony in a crossface. Mercedes gets EO in a sleeper. And so they're all like doing submissions to each other. Eventually, that sort of let, lets go. EO hits. I don't know why I call this a 618 because it's 619. I forget what the other name for it. Uh, EO hits a 619 on Mercedes. Mercedes hits a German suplex uh, from the top that looked nasty on Tony yeah. Storm. And yeah. then EO does the bit where she's the, that Stevie Bradley hates. When you stomp somebody, you do a double stomp when they're in the tree of woe as they're trying to pull themselves up. Um, So after that, uh, on the outside, uh, Tony has Mercedes on the outside. She starts clearing the table, and I I don't know what happened, but she sort of cleared the table, and it just collapsed. It just fell apart. It was the those weirdest things are, thing. Those things are house of cards as it is, man. Yeah, I mean, I understand. You know, they're they're they're, they're gimmicked, obviously, to to break down and to cushion the fall as best it can. I mean, it's still gonna hurt like hell. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, it was hilarious to see them just collapse. Uh, yeah. So it just falls apart. They're able to improvise. I think they turned it into like a DDT. I think what was supposed to happen maybe was Mercedes was supposed to backdrop Tony. Uh, yeah, I think she's Tony's supposed to go for Storm Zero, and I think Mercedes is going to back her, drop her onto the table because they set it up where Tony goes for Storm Zero and Mercedes reverses it into a DDT. And then, I mean, I don't know if that would have collapsed the table, but uh, EO was then climbing the truss, and she got pretty high. Uh, and so she ended up just doing, because the table fell apart, they did like a DDT to get back up, and uh, EO drops them both with a crossbody. Mm-hmm. Um, so that basically takes EO out. Uh, as Mercedes sort of really takes it to Tony Storm, who's able to come back, hit Storm Zero. Um, Tony was okay. So the the, the very last mat, the very so last Tony, move. What, what happened there? You got you got Tony hit Storm Zero. Mercedes kicks out, and then Tony goes up top for a flying headbutt. Hits mm-hmm. that covers, and on the cover, flying headbutt. Okay, that's when EO does the moon salt. And then uh, Tony rolls off. EO covers Mercedes to get the win. Yeah, mm-hmm. I wonder. Yeah. Do you think that EO doing these crazy things? The fact that she does them so nonchalantly on TV does that water down moments like when she does cross bodies off the truss? Well, no, because she didn't do cross bodies off the truss on regular TV. No, but she does. She will saunter down. She will saunter down and do these insane moon salts like to the outside. Yeah. I thought the cross body off the truss was great. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, that's like was twice great. as high as a moon salt would be. Yeah, I know. It was super high. I would. I like this match because, well, a lot, several reasons. But one thing it really did was establish Mercedes Martinez as someone who's going to be uh, uh, wrecking havoc uh, in the women's division for a, a long time. Because this she was was she was destroying Tony. There's a stretch where she hits with a running knee and then three uh, Kamagoyes before, and then hits the perfect plex. Like there are sequences where she was in control and wrecking everybody. Yeah, it was a great. It was a really great performance. Like we've seen a lot of what Tony Storm can do. Obviously, yeah. we've seen plenty of Io Shirai. Haven't seen as much of Mercedes Martinez. And I would expect there to be a Mercedes EO 101 match because Mercedes can get on the mic and say, EO, I had, you know, uh, you denied me. I guess it was Tony that hit the flying headbutt. But anyways, you can spin it where Mercedes is like, hey, you know, maybe I was, at some point earlier on, she was on the verge of winning. EO broke that up. You denied me my chance of fulfilling my 20-year dream to become champion here in, a w- in WB, essentially. Yeah. Uh, we still have beef. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, after that, uh, LA Knight which has won the poll. I think it was 84 votes to 62 votes yeah. uh, uh, here in our Twitch chat uh, for having just the best name. Of the, I think the poll was, is this the best name in all of wrestling now? No, I think it was just, was, one. It, was, his name, was his name all right? Was his yeah, name serviceable? Was his name great? Uh, LA was, was it, is, is LA Knight a name? That was the poll. <laughs> <laughs> wow, 60 people said, no, it's not a name. It's including a hybrid me. shoe brand. It's including a new super me. shoe. There you go, <laughs> including including yours truly. Uh, so he signs his contract with his own pen, uh, and then after that we had uh, Finn Balor versus uh, Pete Dunne. Oh man, this match is absolutely terrific and hurts. Poor hurts. Finn Balor's hands. By the end of it, there was so much joint manipulation. So that if you're he familiar with hold his hands to do the guns. So if you're familiar with the Seinfeld episode, The Bet, mm-hmm, yeah, which is the master of your domain episode. Yeah. So the one of the the cautionary tale in that episode is a man. It's a hand man, a hand model, who uh, falls so in love with his own hands mm-hmm. that he uses them excessively mm-hmm. to jack off. Yeah, to crank it. <laughs> to crank it. And in the process, his hands turned claws. So when Finn was out there <laughs> yeah. trying to do the gut fingers, his hands were claws, much like yeah. that hand model who was not the master of his domain. I was not the master of my own domain. I like that he knew 
Like, there was no reason for that character to have known the reference, Master of My Own Domain, but the, the audience did. That's that's good. That's great writing. That's writing. It's great. Writing. It's great writing. Exactly. Great writing. Um, so anyways, uh, yeah, this was, this was really good stuff. It was a lot of Pete Dunn. Uh, at one point, Pete Dunn tries to go for an X-Plex and he sort of crank, he, speaking of cranking, he sort of cranks, cranks his knee in the process. And so Finn has a target now, whereas Pete targeted. Dunn's target is always just Finn's hand. He stomped his hands, I think three times in total. Yeah. Uh, yeah. and, and just cranked them a million cranked times it. during the match. Uh, but Finn Balor had a target. He had the knee to go after, so he would go after the knee pretty heavily for the rest of the match. Yeah, anytime yeah, Finn felt like he was at a disadvantage if he went after the knee, uh, he could seemingly turn the table. So towards the finish here, uh, Finn pulls out Peter Dune's mouth card, just rips it right out of his mouth. Mm-hmm. Uh, drop kicks him right in the face. Follow, oh, this is this is the end, actually. Follows with coup de gras, 1916 for the win. This is a, just a, a lot of this match was jockeying for position. Yeah, right. Um, you know, the they get the other their opponent in a tight spot, and then uh, you know they go after the weakened body part and try to gain the upper hand from there. So after the bout, Lorcan and Birch run down. They attack Finn uh, on the apron as Finn's trying to do the gun fingers with his claw hands. Um, and so they put him back in the ring. Peter Dune joins in the beatdown. Undisputed, undisputed error make the save. They send the heels out of the ring. So uh, Kyle O'Reilly goes down. Finn still stalling. He's sitting on the mat. Pats him on the back. Finn's like. Get off me. Bats his hand away. And Kyle O'Reilly's talking to him. Offers his hand. He's like, hey, you're a, you're a good champion. You're a you great know what? Dude. I respect you. We had some wars. We had some battles. But I think we earned each other's it's respect. It's like me after what, during your great Ultimo Larson run. I was like, you know what, man? You're a great champion. You're doing great that work. Felt, that always felt kind of condescending. This felt very genuine from Kyle what? O'Reilly. You do a poll So Finn accepts. Uh, pulls him up. It seems like Kyle O'Reilly is like, cause they're all wearing their undisputed. Yeah, he was like, like, hey, we can add a B to this. You want in? You want in? You, you want, want to in. be a B? You want in? We got Bob Fish and, already here. We got another B. We'll just take the B out, put the B Balor in. Yeah, and so there's they don't really you know like Finn doesn't really say anything. They all kind of do the they all stand shoulder to shoulder, mm-hmm. and undisputed air members do the pose. And Finn's trying to do his gun finger thing here, and then he eats a super kick from Adam Cole. Oh no! And the Kyle O'Reilly's like, dude, what the what's heck? up with that? WTF? Why is you super kick him? So they're oh, arguing shit. a bit. Roddy Strong stuck in the middle. And then uh, Adam Cole super kicks Kyle O'Reilly too, and then Adam Cole storms off, and Roddy's kind of like has like I think one leg in the ropes in the ring, and the, and the rest of his body out, and he's pretty much just looking back and forth. Do I do? Do I go to them? They're sleeping right now. That guy, he's my best friend. He's walking Making sense away. Of the whole thing. He didn't tell me he was going to do this stuff. What's going on here? Adam Cole got his edge back. Yeah. He's like, hey man. Uh, there's this guy in town named Edge. I got to get my Edge back so that I can fight that Edge. Well, I mean, I think I think the short term thing. This is going to lead to obviously Cole versus Kyle O'Reilly. Oh yeah, uh, to strengthen Kyle O'Reilly's case to be a main eventer in NXT. Uh, That's yeah. Cole, a number one in all this. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're right. I mean, they need to do that because he's been in Adam Cole's shadow for such a long time. Um, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, the, the the thing is, Mike, he's been in his shadow for such a long time. And it's going to be an interesting challenge for them to get Kyle O'Reilly to the point. Because I think they love Kyle O'Reilly. I think they might. I have no idea what they're going to do with Killer Cross. But if Killer Cross wasn't around, I'd say they they could potentially have future world champion, future NXT champion ideas for Kyle O'Reilly. Um, well, I think that's still entirely, that could still entirely be within play. Um, see how everything works out. Well, I think Finn's also a good champion too is right now. Yeah, I think yeah, definitely. Carrying across, I, you know, I don't think he's uh, probably looked at as a long term member of the NXT roster. Yeah, you're probably right about that. You know, he's in a feud now. I think I actually kind of appreciate that. Yeah, he was champion. He had to vacate the title due to injury. They're keeping him out of the title picture right now. Yeah. You know, you know, he's well, back. He's in there. the cruiserweight title picture now. Yeah. He's back there. He's a looming threat at any given time. Mm-hmm. But there's just they'll keep throwing things at him to keep him out of the picture for a while until mm-hmm. they decide. Well, he's going to be here for a, a bit, seemingly. Maybe I mean, they might not even know, or he's going to get called up after Mania. Mm-hmm. Um, so you know, uh, I think in the meantime, there's opportunities to develop Kyle O'Reilly as a main eventer. Maybe even over the summer, put the belt on him if, if that's really a goal. I wonder if this is also. I mean, in the meantime, we talked about this at the beginning of the show, but I wonder if this is also. Hey. Vince isn't going to bring up four guys at the same time. 
So Adam Cole, you're going to want to make your stamp as a singles guy, you know, without the undisputed era, we finish up their story. The yeah. breakup is here. Tyler and Riley beats him. Adam Cole goes off the main roster. He goes to main roster because it's, I mean, I have no idea what his contract status is like, but that dude at next contract, he needs to say something like, Hey, in October, we're probably going to be back on, on the Peacock network. And, uh, I want to be on cable TV. You know that three-hour black hole of, of 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 time that you've got there called Raw. That's where I want to be. No, say I want. You should say I want to go to SmackDown. You know how SmackDown's a really good show. That's where I want to be. Yeah. Anyways, okay, let's take a couple questions here from our Twitch chat live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, we've got from White Brownie says, "Let's say the NXT title gets a spot at Mania. Mm-hmm. Which matchup would make sense?" Uh, Okay, let's let's take Finn versus Walter out of it, Larson, because that's what I want the most, and I know I'm pretty sure that's what you want the most. He says what 100%. would make the most sense: Finn versus Cross, Walter, Edge, or Cole. Cole. It's Finn versus Cole. That makes the most sense. It's sort of the two biggest NXT guys, two of the it's, biggest. It's NXT the two guys. greatest NXT champions yeah. by number of days with the title. That's got to be that it. That makes the yeah. most sense. And then from there, you can go to Cole versus Kyle O'Reilly. Maybe Kyle O'Reilly gets involved in that title match, costs Adam Cole the belt. Um, then you can go to, to Cole versus O'Reilly. But I need Finn versus Walter. That has to happen. Yeah, that needs to happen. Oh, that's going to be summer so good. That's going to be summer so slam good. Over the summer or something. Yoshi Bowl, what are the chances we get an undisputed era fatal four-way down the line? Part of me... Mm, I don't know about that. I don't know. Because there's I that, there's that like, guy who's never there. That's the, that's the problem there, yeah. Um, but also, we don't know how Roddy fits in the whole thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I, here's the thing. I would love a triple threat. I mean, if you want to make it a true fatal four-way, I just don't know if, they can, if they're going to bring in Fish and have him be a singles guy, too. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, mm-hmm. dude, Roderick Strong is one of my favorite wrestlers just from an mm-hmm. in-ring standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd love for them to try to build a character – around him, but I think that he works so much better as a bad guy than a good guy. Mm -hmm. We'll see, but I'd love to see a triple threat with those guys. Uh, White Brownie. Nope. Sorry. Just did that one. Uh, Jorge D since it's Valentine's day, which NXT wrestler would each of you guys double date with? If the chosen wrestler is single, then choose a partner for them. Okay. So me and my wife or you and your wife, who yeah. would you want to do a double click? John! <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> it would be... Uh, I would go on a double date with... Uh, Walter. Mm. And... Uh, well, it would be the two NXT UK... T- no! it. Oh, boy, that's a tough one. God, there's so many options there in NXT UK to choose from. Yeah. I'd I'll put, say Johnny, Johnny and Candice. That's that's what I'd say. I'll put the Walter the, uh-huh. with Ginny because okay. she's supposed to be like rich fashionista person so she could pay for our meals. Yeah. Hey, Ginny. The problem, I, the problem with going to, to dinner with the, the Garganos would be I, I the whole time. I it's know, like, hey, dude. You got to stop. John. Look, 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 Larson. John. Larson. John, I've stopped. I have stopped. It's time to stop. Okay, I'll try. John, <laughs> enough I could do with Steve. Just, well, how hey, about this? How, let's just start here. Let's just start here. John, relegate it. Relegate it to friendo mailbag section. When people ask questions about John, use it then, but not during the recap itself. No promises. I'm here Don't stabbing a pencil into my him, notebook. People. Don't encourage him. People. Dang him Q. Should Bob Fish leave Undisputed Era and drag it again with Kyle or go both or both go solo? How about this? How about this? Next takeover, I will not challenge. Big well, well that doesn't really work. I was gonna say we don't make it for Big Red. We make it for John. Well, that seems like a punishment. The punishment aspect. You don't it's usually a do punishment for you to yeah, not like say John. It. I like doing it. It's fun for me. <laughs> we'll John. talk about it. We got to put John up on the line. All right. Ethion M with the sub. Thank you so much. 
Uh, let's see here. John Elite says, if NXT has a takeover for Mania, how are they going to do it since Mania is two nights? Last time, didn't they just do it on the night of the Hall of Fame usually? Wait, sorry. Oh, takeover? Yeah. Oh, never mind. Wait. Did they no, do they that? didn't do a takeover. No, they didn't do year. a takeover. No. no, I just don't no. think they're going to do a takeover. Yeah, it seems like they've they've they they gotten away from having takeovers on weekends with WWE pay per views. It's great. It is great. Muted May Day. Raquel looking genuinely happy was moment of the night mm-hmm. for Muted May Day. Yeah, no, it was a terrific moment, and I don't I don't mean to be like, hey, why aren't you keep it kayfabe, brother? Uh, I do. I don't mean to be like that at <laughs> all. But I like for stories to, to, to play out on the on the faces of the characters. Uh, Jay Monnet says, L.A. Knight's first feud will be with Blake Christian, now going by British gear. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Jeffrey Nguyen points out, you definitely see Loomis chloroform theory. I oh, did not okay. see that, but I, you know, I, 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 I believe you when you say it. Yes, yeah, so I have a much smaller screen over here. Uh, Corey Luckis are Dakota and Raquel the new Diesel and HPK? Yes. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, Corey, oh Corey Letkus also. If you had to pick one person post Mania to debut to debut the night after Mania, who would you pick? Carrying Cross. Yes. Yeah. Uncle Scar eighty seven with sub. Thank you. Uh, Haggis says have oh something. There's a pull up about me saying John. Uh, Haggis says, have L.A. Knight come out in a pink Izod shirt with acid wash jeans and white British Knights. That's perfect. So you got the you got to choose on that poll. I'm going to choose on this poll. All right. A nay. Oh, shit. Didn't let me do that. Oh, man. I don't have Twitch up. <laughs> oh, I do. Idiot. Yay. No. Yay. I'm the decision maker. I won. I won tonight. You said I was decision maker. All right. I'm going to I'm going to negate that by heading to my personal account and choosing nay nay uh Uh, marcus steal the sub thank you so much nay oh man the yays are killing the nays right now this isn't yeah man close people love john close john the worst. The ultimate coder. Who gets the titles first, MSK or Grizzled Young Veterans? You would think MSK because they have a guaranteed title shot. It'd be MSK. You know, man, they promised people too much stuff with these contracts. You should have just let them go to AEW or wherever. They would have been buried in the tag division. <clears throat> they call me Merp says, don't hate on MSK, Steve, because they beat your guys. I'm, dude, I love I'm Grizzled not. Young Veterans too, I'm though. not. I just, they they haven't been like, they're new. They're new. I want people. I want to see people put the work in to get to the point. I just don't like. Oh, we're bringing these guys in. Well, here's the thing: MSK did do that, but they did that impact. So, yeah, they're they're good. Look, they're good. They're They're good. I don't mean to crap on them. You know me. I'm I'm, dude. The same. You you and I did the same thing when John uh, uh, beat Adam Cole that one time. (laughs) We're crapping all over that match. That was ridiculous. Uh, it was ridiculous. That was ridiculous. Was totally ridiculous. Anyways, that's gonna that's gonna do it for this recap. We'll uh, stick John. around. On, yeah, it won. It stick at eighty percent and twenty percent. Oh, 20%. oh wow. my goodness gracious! All right, that would be punishment for me. That's punishment for the people out there too. They love John. They love it. You know what it is with MSK? They love fun. And WWE's gonna neuter the crap out of these guys. They're fun loving guys. They should have debuted them at the last takeover in a pod and it's and it's all smoked out. They should have hotboxed a pod at the Capitol Wrestling Center. Then I would have been like, oh, that's cool. Yeah, Spidey yeah. Bill has it exactly right. Steve doesn't like guys who like to have fun. I don't. I don't want people to have fun. I like to be that's why I'm your best friend. Like I love you because you're miserable all the time. You know what the one thing that brings me joy? What? John. <laughs> Goodbye everybody. Bye. Help support Going In Raw today by becoming a Friendo Club TV member. You'll get access to new bonus episodes every week, including Friendo Club Arcade, Live Power Rank, Vintage 10 for the Wins, and Ask Steven Larson. Get access to Friendo Club TV today by becoming a $5 and up patron at patreon.com forward slash Steven Larson, by throwing us a sub at twitch.tv forward slash Steven Larson, or by clicking join at youtube.com forward slash Steven Larson. 